Good evening, and welcome to Newcastle After Dark. We are your hosts, the management. Coming to you from the land of Pappins and Michelangelo's Flea Market, bringing you films that are a feast for the mind. Tonight's film is 1978's The Evil, starring Richard Crenna. This has Joanna Pettit, Andrew Prime, and Victor Buono. And you know, after last month's mayhem with, you know, Night of Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead, we figured we would bring you a nice ghost story. And this really is that, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it it's, is. It's cool. It is. It's forgotten. It is forgotten. Um, it has a little Amityville horror to it. A little touch of Night Gallery. A little bit, which I love. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like all the macabre elements in this Absolutely. Film. And this definitely has it. Yes. Yeah. So sit back, relax, and enjoy 1978's The Evil. You ain't gonna get to old Sam. You're just the house, it's all you are. <laughs> foolishness. It's just what this is, damn foolishness. Ain't nothing. Just gotta come in this time of day. Yeah. Never came inside this place before. Yeah. Some some newcomer. Oh, damn. Clean up all this sloppy old mess. Who's there? <laughs> you come on out now. Oh. 
Just better. <laughs> we better be gone. Oh, we the hell out of here. Coming down now. Come on now. Nothing. There you go, Mr. Arno. Sorry this took so long. What seemed to be the problem, Mr. Decker? All oh, the usual background check, you understand. Even with your length of experiences in drug rehabilitation, some of the board members had certain uh, questions. We were sure your center would be a beneficial operation, but your foundation was so new. So uh, we decided to take a more cautious approach. If uh, you had had an affiliation with an organized uh, church, uh, I regard most organized churches as organized hypocrisy. <laughs> That's a rather strong opinion, isn't it? Well, we both know that weak opinions serve no purpose, don't we? <laughs> yes, that's very true. was supposed to beat us out front. Dan! Maybe he's inside. Possible. Probably found a bottle. Sam! Sam, are you in there? Sam! Oh, oh, please come in. Please come in. Sam! No lights? I'm afraid not. Most of the wiring gave out years ago. But that's the only drawback. Let me fix this. Here. There. Here, let me fix this. There we are. Ah, uh, there haven't been any permanent residents here for years. Old Mr. Vargas, who built this, 
He died uh, uh, in his 30s. <laughs> Old at 30? Well, just a figure of speech. <laughs> And the stories of an old man becomes old. It said his hair turned white. And only glimpses of him were ever seen after his 30th birthday. That was before the war, the Civil War, that is. After that, it was converted to a conservatory for young women. And the music rooms were added then. But uh, the school folded. This was the main dining room. <laughs> Cozy. It was vacant for several years before the county took it over. Then it came under the supervision of the Redevelopment Bureau at the turn of the century. There's been no one in here all that time? Yours was the only inquiry my office processed in quite a bit. Beautiful. <laughs> the Indians gave this spot a wide berth. There were sulfur pits, Steam pools, Valley of the Devils, the legends called it. That's why Vargas built it, so they say. Built it right over a fumarole. Wanted the heat. Needed the mineral baths. Who knows? It is beautiful. But it's so strangely desolate. Didn't make much difference. Geothermal activity stopped just about the time the house was finished. Just dried out, like he put a seal on it. Well, big enough. I don't know. It's going to take an awful lot of work. You have plenty of volunteers. There's nearly 200 rooms in the main building, and the caretaker's housing in the back. Sam's not too reliable, though. I don't think you'll want to keep him on. Every time I need him, he's off someplace else. But that'll be no big problem for you. You've got all the volunteers you need. I think everything's just gonna be fine. It was vacant for several years before the county took it over. Of course, there was some opposition to your taking the place, you know. But that's not much of anything. Carolyn, what are you doing? Something wrong? I guess these 18 hour days are getting to me. What's down here? More rooms loaded with rooms. You mentioned uh, some opposition, Mr. Decker. Well, you always get that, no matter what you want to do. Some of the people around here felt the house should be left vacant. There was even a movement uh, one time to have the house torn down. But the Vargas house is a historical landmark. Why would they want to tear the house down? Oh, noises and accidents in around the place. Everything one normally associates with overactive imaginations. Stories get started about any old house that's been vacant for a while. What kind of stories? Oh, just the stories. Just old wives' tales. Look out! Oh, my God. Are you all right? I'm all right. I'm fine. I'm fine. You're, You're fine. fine? You could have been hurt. I'm terribly no, sorry, Mr. Apologies. Decker. No need to apologize. It wasn't your fault. Would you stop fussing? Huh? Am oh, I am sure. I bleeding? Are you sure you're all right? Would you stop fussing? It's Please. that serious. Oh. You just let me look at that. Uh -huh. All right. Mr. Decker, can I give you a piece of advice? Never marry a doctor. In spite of all of your uh, stories, I think we're ready to go ahead with this right away. Oh, excellent, excellent, Mr. Arnold. We can stop by my office and sign the lease agreement. Fine. I'll call some of my volunteers. Disturb not he who is here held in chains. I think from now on, any stories about this place will have a whole different ring. Carolyn?
laws of physics are logical, positive, constant. Not so the world of psychology, but light, concentrated, powerful. Light in the form of knowledge, compassion, understanding, can open up a mind, or if misused, can destroy it, just as surely as that laser disintegrated its target. Oh, by the way, I'd like to thank you all for your dedication this semester. Some of you, by accident or by design, will be back next semester. My thesis is finished. By then, I'll have my PhD in a shingle, so you won't have to listen to me anymore. <laughs> anyway, I hope you've learned something worthwhile here. Have a nice summer. Very well done, Professor. Oh, I should call you doctor, shouldn't I? How about your excellency? Now, that has a nice <laughs> ring to it. <laughs> it's got something. Oh, by the way, CJ called this afternoon, and we're to be out there at 9 o'clock in the morning. They got the place? Yep. That's fantastic. You can count on the job this summer. Oh, great, finally. I cleared it with the dean's office, so, my lady, you'll be getting uh, three credits for your work <laughs> this summer at the center. Oh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, please, Miss Belvin, not so familiar, you don't mind? Where should we go? Your place or mine? You're crazy. You know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's not a very helpful thing for a psychologist to say. You're still crazy, mm -hmm. but you are a beauty. And I have you all to myself all summer. Oh, wait a minute. You've already got the job. What else do you want? Well, it's got to be something. I'd hate to ask. You're a smart boy. <laughs> I need this summer, too. It's the best possible practical demonstration of what C.J.'s doing in his field. And it's what I want to do hey, in mine. Hey, hey, hey. What? Dinner tonight. Professor. Right. Celebrate. Mm -hmm. Champagne. Mm -hmm. Uh, my place. Mm-hmm. My place. Your place. <laughs> Run up the rain pipe on the second floor later on. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, you helped me, Miss CJ. Hey, what the storm brewing up, you know, might give us some trouble. How you doing, CJ? Good, good. What do you think of this place? I tell you, nothing that ain't big. That's for damn sure. <laughs> Sam, let you in. Sam, Sam who? Caretaker. I see him caretaker around here. Did you look around the back? Yeah, I've been back there. I saw nobody. Well, I guess Decker was right. Sam's reliability quotient seems a bit flawed. AJ, hey, I have the keys, please. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Hey, watch your step there. Think you get some lights today? Well, I'm going to give it a shot, CJ. Uh, the generator ain't working too good, and the storm coming around to give us some more problems, you know? Yeah, well, I don't want to push you too hard. Not at the prices I'm paying you. Oh, you know it. Wouldn't be for you, my brother would be on ice. See anybody wandering around this place that looks like a caretaker? Saw what? I thought I saw it move. You thought you saw it move? Oh, I don't see any difference. Light, the shadows in the room. I don't know. I 
I guess it had to be. Didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think it had to be. <laughs> Yeah, very funny, Pete. Oh, oh, God, Pete, when are you going to grow up? Well, what's the matter with you? That joke's a classic. Mm, and so are you. <laughs> hey, Dwight, I want you to meet some people. Well, what do you think, huh? Oh, Pete, oh, well. this place is enormous. Yeah, really, what do we need all this space for? Well, let me put it this way. The price was right. Okay, fine, we'll take it. <laughs> Dwight, I'd like you to meet Mary Harper. And this is Felicia Allen. We're looking up here. What's the name? Mary. They're in our drug rehabilitation program. And our resident cook, Pete Brooks. Uh, you forgot someone. Uh, Kaiser here. Hi, dude. What's he doing? Oh, not much, but when he talks, everyone listens. I hope his house broke. Hey, Raymond. Hey, CJ. Dwight, this is Raymond Guy. It looks like he brought a new recruit. That we do. My friend and student, Miss Laurie Belvin. Hello. Hello. Better and better. How are you doing? Oh, I'm one of those guys, huh? Hello, <laughs> Laurie Belvin. Now, the first thing we have to do, obviously, is clean the place. Oh, bummer. Not everything at once. That takes a month. So we'll start with a few bedrooms. And I think we got to do the dining room. Got to do the bathroom. And we'll do the kitchen. Risk of sounding like a male chauvinist, I think the lady should do the kitchen. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 none of that. <laughs> no, if the ladies are displeased with their assignment, they can volunteer to help Pete and I, because we're going to clean the toilets. <laughs> oh, great. Up to my ass in toilets. <laughs> what about lights? Don't we need some lights? Oh, we got the cleaning stuff in town. Good. Hey, I hate to bring up a good time wrap here, boss, but uh, I got to get back to work. We'll be here forever. I hope all the fireplaces work. Yeah, the fireplaces all work, and so Felicia can relax. Dwight, what about the lights? I don't think the city's going to connect us for about a week. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, got a pretty good-looking crew here. We should get some work out of them. Now, huh, Felicia Fox, Mary Sunshine, Ray Melancher, you good for something, huh? <laughs> uh, Gil should have a first generator fired up by now. We'll get some work lights in here. And then uh, tomorrow we're going to have three generators working. You know, We're starting the ground floor now, and... Uh, Listen, there'll be cables strung out all over, you know, so you guys try not to step on them and don't go chewing on them, things like that. You know? And, uh, that's about it, boss. No, okay. Yeah, if we're gonna get this place in shape, it's gonna take a lot of work. We really gotta get our acts together. I appreciate it. comedy.
you go first. This place really gives me the creeps. been vicious in his whole life. I don't understand. Well, at least he didn't get his teeth into you. There. I think you're gonna be okay. Well, we looked everywhere, Mary. I don't think you could have gotten out of the house, so we'll find him. Well, would have made him behave that way. Well, something frightened him. He's never acted that way before in his whole life. I've had him since he was a puppy. Well, if he's hiding, when he gets over it, he'll come out. Yeah, you're going to be all right, huh? Yeah. Um, why don't I go upstairs and do some work or... No, no, I don't think you should. Why don't you just lie down and rest for a while? No, it'd really be good for my head to get away from Sure? Yeah. Huh? Okay. Hello, Mary. Let's go find something to do. Don't worry about it. We'll find it. CJ, this place frightens me. What do you mean? I feel there's... there's something in here. What? I don't know. There's something... something evil. Oh, Carolyn. That thing with a dog can be explained very simply. Oh, I don't think it can. Yeah. Dogs react to things we don't know anything about. Now, you saw him down there. Yeah. Well, you can't honestly believe he was just afraid of the dog. Yes, I can, because I know that's all it could be. Oh, CJ, I'm frightened. Carolyn, I know an incident like this can frighten anybody. But for a doctor, you have a very, very vivid imagination. You know that? You all right? Mm -hmm. Well, I go crack the whip.
Carol. I thought I heard something drop. Oh, you started a fire. Good. What's this? Diary of Emilio Vargas. <laughs> you must have led a very eventful life. The pages are all blank. soul would set the holy seal upon the gate. What, what is this? Shall guard thy place in life and death till time is no more that no man will set loose the beast within. I saw him. You saw who? The man who built this house. house was an eccentric who's been dead for more than a century. Now, look, this is an interesting book, but that's all it is. Just an interesting old document. It's for the fire, Raymond or Dwight or one of the other workmen probably started. This sounds weird, but I think there's something here. And I think what he's trying to tell us. What, what, what who's trying to tell us? We're being warned to get out. Well, I can take a hint. storm before it's done. Yeah. Oh. Oh, is my back killing me? God. Why are these bars here? I don't know. I guess, uh, keep students in, probably. I don't like it. I think it's really weird. Give me a hand, huh? something that's, that's personal, and I really didn't know how to begin. So I'm, I guess I'm just going to ask you, how did you get into this group? Let me show you something. You see that? Those freckles? CJ got me off the horse. He saved my life. That answer your question? Yeah. Damn funny asshole, then you get your own self down. Come on, Lori, let this this fool help himself. Help him! Hey, hey man, come on! I really am sorry. Oh, Felicia, would you help me down? Come on! CJ, you're not going down in the basement, are you? I'm afraid I can't bring the furnace up here. Please, wish you wouldn't. If you see any ghosts, I'll tell you. In about 15 minutes. Well, do I have enough time to take another look for Kaiser? I don't want him staying in this place by himself tonight. Yeah, sure. We'll wait for you. Uh, take somebody with you, though, will you? Okay. Oh, Felicia! Ray. Will you come yeah. to me for a minute? Sure. Well, what conditions 
Would there have to be, say, in a house like this? To cause the appearance of... figures. Okay, if you were a dog, where would you go? You trying to be funny, lady? No, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to be logical about this. Well, logic's got nothing to do with it. I don't even think we should be trying to figure out what scared him so bad in the first place. Yeah, maybe you're right. Okay, then what do you think it was? I think it was that dumbass Pete if he hadn't been in the same room no. with us. No, you should have seen the trick he pulled on us. Scared that little old girl half to death. Him and his practical jokes. Actually, I shouldn't be so hard on him, though. You know, he really does come through when it counts. I just hope he just doesn't pull that trick on the wrong dude and end up spending the rest of his life trying to yank his head out of his hind end. Hey! <laughs> what is this? Some kind of dumb waiter or something, I guess. Wait. <laughs> Kaiser?
Let's get the hell out of here. Come on! You all right? Joan? say it's, it's pretty interesting yeah I'm, I'm enjoying it and uh, the first thing you may notice is Richard Crenna who has been in countless films such as you know First Blood right the very first Rambo film yeah but he was also in Devil Dog Hound of Hell which we wanted to bring to you that's right that's right he was um, he was in uh, Leviathan Death Ship I mean tons tons and tons of movies good actor absolutely and his wife is played by Joanna Pettit. And you had found an interesting fact about her. I guess Joanna Pettit was one of the last people to see Sharon Tate alive. Wow. Um, because I guess uh, that they had lunch, and that night was uh, when the Manson murders happened. That's horrible. It's crazy. That's horrible. It is. Yeah. Now, the one college student is played by Lynn Moody, who, right before this, she was in Roots. Yeah, that's right. And uh, she also... She was in Blackula Scream, right? Scream, yes. Blackula Scream. Yes, yes, that's it, yes. Right. And, you know, she's an accomplished actress. She was yeah. in tons of TV shows. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we have a good cast here. Oh, definitely. I, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, you know, we have a theory that all it takes is a couple of know-it-alls and some college students, and it's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, and it always is. Oh, it always is. You know, if you want me to leave your house, just make something move on its own. Well, like the statue right in the beginning. Yeah. The hell the statue moves. Yeah, it looks at me. All it's going to see is my back because <laughs> I'm going to be leaving. Right. You know, I don't have to see anything else. That alone is going to push me out the door. I'm oh, done. yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for Completely. sure. Completely. Yeah. But, you know, then they, they find the dumb waiter. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Remember, the caretaker uh, there in the very beginning, you know, he gets burned up there in the basement. So they find him in a dumbwaiter, but he still has... His hair. His hair, yeah. Well, you know, he had that strong Grecian formula. <laughs> Whatever he had, I need to find some of that. It's flame retardant. You know, they probably don't make it anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sure, exactly. you know, whatever it's asbestos. Does, I'm <laughs> exactly. exactly, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. But, you know, we've known each other long enough that we both know, without even saying it, that if, if I'm looking at a house or he's looking at a house and one of us finds the trap door in the floor of the dirt floor basement, 
and there's a cross holding the trap door closed. Yeah. We're going to be pushing that dirt right back over, patting it smooth. And I'm like, you didn't move that cross, did you? <laughs> Don't tell them people. <laughs> right? Right? Clue number two, I'm out. Yeah. Again. I think even more so at that point. Oh, completely. You know? Completely. I'll be like, you guys, I'm going to go get some cleaning supplies and cigarettes. <laughs> I'll be back. Right. Exactly. I'll be back. I ain't coming back. I ain't coming back. Yeah. I ain't coming back. <laughs> and you know, the other thing I love in this is um, the thunderstorm. Yes. In this. That stock sound. It, it, you know. It's like home. It is. It is. And I do like it. I do. I do. But it's like, you know, watching the Munsters. Yeah. Or, right. They used in everything. They did. Yeah. Because like it, it works. It works it, well. It does. It does. Yeah. If we ever made a movie, we're using it. It's going to be in there. Absolutely. It is. And we're off to a good start. Absolutely. So let's get back to the evil. Well, I think you're going to be all right. But you better rest a bit, okay? What is happening in this house? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, you hit your head pretty hard, so I think you better not move around too much. I don't think you have a fracture, but uh, you might have a slight concussion, so just take it easy, all right? Okay. Thank you. I'll come back and see you in a while. All right. Dwight's dead. The other man's body will be found in the kitchen. And they're all locked in here. Those are the facts. Does anybody have a logical explanation for what's happened? Okay. Now, suppose that over the years, this house could soak up some of the natural power around it. Uh, I mean, the atmospheric conditions, like some of the ones that exist outside today. Now, that power could suddenly be released. There has to be more to it than that. Well, maybe there is, but my little theory is as good as anything I've heard so far. I think it does have something to do with the storm. What? I don't know. Great. That's not much of a theory either. Well, it, it could have, couldn't it? I mean, doors won't open, glass it doesn't break. Well, you know that static electricity does incredibly weird things sometimes, Raymond. You know that. Could that have been what made Kaiser go crazy? No, it's not the storm. It's something else. Now, how do you know that? Well, I don't know. But I think the key to all of it is in the diary. Carolyn, what diary? I found an old diary in the study. And all the pages were blank except one. And that was a, a riddle. No, it was a verse. And I think it must be a warning of some kind. How do you know that? Well, I've seen flashes of this figure. I have. It's just a shape, almost. But I have seen it. I saw it just over there. And he waved me into the study. And, and there was the diary. And I've seen other things, too. Are they, uh, visions? I don't know what they are. They're flashes of something. There must have been some great conflict in this house. Between what? Good and evil. You mean between God and the devil? I don't know. Well, you can all sit here and discuss theology if you want. I'm going to try to find a way out of here. Hold on, CJ. I'm coming with you.
Come on, it's all right. What happened? Huh? What happened? Come on. Felicia, there's nobody here. There's nobody Let's here. They're all alone. TJ, they're all alone. Let me get her out of here and sit down by the fire. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Well, until we find out what the hell's going on here, keep everybody together. Don't let anybody wander off alone, all right? Good idea. Be enough? You better be. Shouldn't I go get the others? I'll try it first. If I make it, then you can bring the rest of them up. You? Uh, with all due respect, Doctor, uh, I think I should be going over to the side first. I can make it. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he can, but well, we don't know how much weight this stuff can take. Well, I hate to mention it, but. Uh, you could afford to lose a few pounds. Look, Pete, you're my responsibility. I brought you all into this. I'm not going to risk your life. Nobody pulled a gun on me. But I came out here on my own. Face it, Doctor, I'm 20 years younger than you. Oh, Doc. You don't have to prove anything to me, all right? Huh? Hold on! 
tried, but there was nothing I could do. First Dwight, then the man in the kitchen, now Pete. This house is trying to kill us all. Oh, God, it's not the house. It's something in the house. Well, that's unfortunate. Because we're in here. The wind came up and the storm got worse. And, uh, well, I, 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 I tried. But he, he fell. I'm sorry. It was my fault. I, it was a stupid thing to try. Couldn't it just have been the lightning hitting the cable? Yeah. Yeah, it had to be that. What do you mean, it had to be that? There's some other force working here, and I think it's about time you admitted it. You were always the first one to look for a new answer, and I think this is one hell of a good time to start. It had to be the lightning. Nothing has to be anything here. All right, all right, that's easy for you to say. And then you follow it up with nothing but hollow theories based on your own overactive imagination. And where did I get my overactive imagination? I sat on my dead ass in your psych class for five years. You rammed it down my throat every day. Oh, no, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's just that everything you ever accomplished was done by exploration, taking chances, and imagination. And if I didn't believe that, if, if I didn't believe in you, I wouldn't be here. And neither would anyone else. So don't tell me now that it was a bunch of high-minded bullshit, because I know better. I know better. And so do you. I guess so. Uh, I guess imagination will have to work for us here. I agree. Professor. Well, what do you know? The generator's still working. Take a look at that. Those damn teeth are almost smooth. Yeah, ground them right off. It's almost as though this door was petrified. Dwight must have had a heavier blade. Where's the tool case? In the kitchen. I'll get it. Carolyn? Carolyn? I don't know how we're going to get out of here. CJ, do you remember what Mr. Decker said about this house? The legends, the sulfur pits? Yes, I He said they dried up, that all the disturbances ended when the house was built. I think Vargas knew what he was doing. Oh, Carolyn, Haven't Decker you was noticed that since the house closed in on us, the whole place stinks of sulfur? Look, I can only fight what I believe exists. Oh, God! That saw's not gonna work. Nothing is gonna work. Maybe it's not. The lightning rods. Lightning? I saw lightning rods on every peak in this house when we drove in this morning. If we still have enough of Dwight's cable left to reach from the collectors to these bars, maybe we can create an energy field, generate enough heat to try to bend them. CJ, that's not going to work. Would it hurt to try? No.
and get something for Vanity. How can I help? Uh, give me a stick or a piece of wood, anything. It's gonna be all right. Gee, I'll get my bag. Okay. All right, hold it. The chance that he, he could lose it. Oh, God. It's all right. Oh, CJ. Oh, it's God. All right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Oh. I'll try to get some rest. This entire place will light up like a Christmas tree. That should get a little attention, if nothing else. Oh, Jesus Christ, Raymond, what makes you think somebody can break in if we can't even get out? A little chance we're taking. Red! We're in here! CJ, do you have any ideas how we can get out of here? No logical ones, I'm afraid. Where's Mary's body? I uh, put it in the entranceway by the stairs. The dog was there, but Mary's body's gone.
found this in the basement, but I don't remember bringing it up here. What was it? It was there on the floor. Vargas showed me. Vargas. Why am I the only one that sees it? You believe in God? I covered all this in my classes. The psychology of religion. Folk tales, legends. The idea of some supreme universal force endlessly at war against devils and demons. There's something as intangible as a human soul. I never believed any of it. I made cocktail party jokes about it. I can't believe I'm worth all this. There's no one in the world exactly like you. What about you? And Raymond and Felicia and the others. Aren't they unique? You are the one he wants. Why me? Why me? I don't know. Oh, Vargas is trying to help us, I know. There has to be a key to this prison. from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. What's all that supposed to mean? It's Satan's return from the depths, revelations. The devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, yes. and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. You 
I'll throw the switch. I'll fix that connection. It's all right. We've got enough. No! I'll hook it up. I want out of here! All right, hurry up, though. The storm's in its height right now. Just take me a second. What is it? Carol. I am Emilio Vargas. What's happening? I sacrificed the innocent caretaker to force you away. You would not heed my warnings. No, no. no. I sealed the pit. Released the evil. I didn't know. I didn't know. The key is in your hands. Feel the pit. Return the beast. Do not disturb this place. Again. Oh, oh, Carolyn. Oh, Carolyn Vargas, come back. Oh, Carolyn. Oh, I need to know more. Oh, Carolyn. Right. Wasn't it? 
There's nothing else left for us to believe in, is there? Forgive me, but you are an endless source of amusement. What is it you want? There. <laughs> See what I mean? After all I've put you through and you still don't know. You did all that? No, Mr. Arnold, you did. You denied the warnings, you opened the door, and still you couldn't accept what you'd done. You pondered the deeper meaning of a universal power for good. Sound familiar? What is it you want from me? My accounts. I fill my accounts. You have a will, Mr. Arnold. Strong, sometimes misdirected, but a will. So you have some value even among your kind. By the way, where is that piece of holy excrement? Your cross. It's a thing of God. How could it come here? Don't question me. I have little enough patience. That thing shall be destroyed, and you are going to see it done. 
Where is it? I see on terror, Mr. Arnold. Your puny fears give birth to it, and you suckle it like swine till it overcomes you. <laughs> No, I won't. <laughs> this can last an eternity. It drains nothing from me, causes me no discomfort. I expend nothing to hold you here and place you in pain far greater than anything you could imagine possible. I'll snap your stubborn will. I want that thing. You defy me, you insignificant speck of vomit. <laughs>
Well, we've reached the conclusion of the evil. And I'd like to know, what's your take? Well, you know, it's the end um, of this that really kind of caught my attention. Mm. You know, I don't expect, I didn't expect to see that whole confrontation with the devil. No. You know? But I loved it. It works. It well, works. You know, Victor Buono was a great actor. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was in Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Yep. And, you know, as among countless other films, right. but he was also known as King Tut in the Batman TV series. That's right. But uh, he delivers his lines with such conviction. I mean, it, it is reminiscent of George C. Scott. It is, you know, because I could see George C. Scott doing that role. Oh, yeah. Yeah, easily. Plus, he was sporting that $1,000 suit. $1,000 suit in 1978. When a car was 6000 bucks. <laughs> right? Heck, yeah. Yeah. That would have been one of my demands. Exactly. Like, put me in some good threads if I'm going to be the devil. Right. You know, devil, right. devil ain't no bum. He, he ain't no bum. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. He ain't no bum. Yeah, he deserves $1,000 at least. Right. Right? right. Yeah. But, you know, there were a few things that we noticed, such as can't break the golden rule. You get out, you go. Yeah. Yeah. You don't mouth off to the spirits. Yeah. Andrew Prine's out there. Ha! Ah, right. I did it. I made it. I beat you. Right. Yeah. You don't do that. And he stepped in that dirt and it became quicksand. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, of course, you have multiple dummies in this. Yes. Yeah, you have the dog dummy. Right. And when the lady fell over the banister, you have the American dummy. That's right. And if you notice, the dog's leg flaps back. <laughs> As it should. <laughs> As it should. Right, exactly. That's right. Exactly. And you know, the gore in this, there's not a whole lot, but it's very well done. Yes. I mean, it really is. When, it, when he saw it through his hand. Yes. It's very well done. Yes. Yeah. Now, you know, we discussed this and, you know, the management are not the people to have. We're not the guys to have there in a crisis situation. Right. Because, you know, if he saw it his hand, yes, I would help him. I'd wrap it in a towel. Right. I'd be good. But if he threw up... You're on your own. Yeah, you're on your own. <laughs> I'll be like, I'll be I'll back. I'll wrap your hand, but you're going to clean up your own vomit. Here's a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. One of these girls can help you out. And you know, once your old lady becomes possessed... You know, by a spirit and in any way, shape, or form. Um, you know, afterwards, I don't know how I'd be with that. Be afraid of a relapse. I would. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> You're right. Absolutely. I don't know if I could sleep comfortably beside her anymore. Like you'd be afraid to make her mad. <laughs> <laughs> she'd be like, "Them bushes need trimmed outside." <laughs> right. She'd be, she'd, like, be like, she'd be like, "Them bushes need trimmed." You know, them bushes. <laughs> be like, ah. Oh. Right? <laughs> I don't know if I can do it. Well, you know, that sounds like a whole nother movie. <laughs> it probably is. A whole nother horror story. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah, it is. Exactly. Yeah, it is. Because, you know, she'd be blaming you for going to the house in the first place. You had to pull that cross out of the Exactly. Floor. Exactly. That's right. She's like, I'd have left you <laughs> with the devil. <laughs> well, you remember, she's the one that saved him in the end. You know, she comes she by. She you know, did the, save him. You know, but again, um, it's a good movie. It, it is really is. Movie. It's the end that kind of caught me off guard because it is a little bit like um, Night Gallery. Yes. You know that. See, that would be something uh, a twist in one of the Night Galleries. Yes. That I would expect to see. Yes. Yeah. But I was surprised to see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I did enjoy that. I did too, as well. Well, we thank you for being here at Newcastle After Dark. We hope you join us again for the Lost Treasure in Cinema. And until next time. Good, good night. night.